Sasha, can you describe to me what it is that a life celebrant does? Yeah, so a life celebrant is somebody who conducts a service, either most of my work is funerals, um, but we can do uh, wedding services, naming ceremonies, uh, so it's more of a personal um, uh, service, as we say, rather than being religious as such. So that's, um, with regards to weddings, I can't legally marry anybody. But, you know, if they legally get married in the registry office, then we can have a blessing um, at the wedding. And um, but funerals, funeral service, so it's a non-religious service, although people do include prayers, etc. And um, it's more personal. So it's a service like a life celebrant is celebrating somebody's life rather than um, talking about God and any religion. So it's more about the person. Okay. So are you speaking with pa families in person or do you have to speak with them over the phone at this time? Because obviously I know with the coronavirus and the lockdown, it gets, makes everything challenging at times like this, especially for what you guys have to do. Yeah, so at the moment, normally I would go to people's houses and left, unless they lived far away. Um, so I'm either doing Zoom calls, FaceTime, uh, or over the phone and um, just having to, to do that. Although I can get more done and it's done quicker rather than sit in anybody's house, I, 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 I'm struggling a bit because it's a personal service, you know, and they're grieving yeah. him. Yeah. Have you uh, found that families are having a harder time to deal with doing funerals the way that they're done now? I know that they're only done with 10 up to 10 people as of right now is that correct yeah so the um crematoriums that i'm working at which is like south of london where i am um yeah only 10 people and that's sort of distanced apart as well um one crematorium is not now offering music or a live stream as such so they some most of the crematoriums offer a live stream so that people can click the link and watch it from the computer or their phone. Mm -hmm. um, but one of them is not offering any music. So what I'm doing is downloading music choices onto my phone, taking my speaker and I've got a good speaker and playing it myself for them because it's already a time that they're struggling and grieving. Yeah. Um, and then to have restrictions that they can't celebrate somebody's life as they would have normally. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I don't want it because the other side of my work, what I do, I'm a positive psychology practitioner. Mm -hmm. I understand that it's going to affect their mental health. And so I'm trying to make that as easy as I possibly can. Yeah. So what's been the hardest and most difficult moment that you've experienced while dealing with stuff like this? Um, for me, it would be that normally at the end of a service, families are so grateful for what I've done that they normally would want to give me a hug or a shake other people's hands as they come out. And not being able to do that has been really tough for me because, you know, I'm watching people grieving, I'm watching people crying constantly. And all naturally, all I want to do is go and give them a hug. Mm -hmm. And, um, so not being able to do that, I'm finding really difficult. Oh, goodness. Oh. So are you finding that people are probably having a harder time coping with the changes that have um, been imposed on funeral services? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. That, you know, like some of them have been mentioning to me after, you know, like, thank you so much. I had an email this morning. Thank you so much. It was really awful to be sat away from somebody you know, during my dad's service mm. and things like that. It's like, you know, they're not being able to connect with each other. Some families are, um, yeah. and, you know, they're, make, they're, they're sitting with their loved ones. Um, but, yeah, that they're definitely, well, it's just something else for them to worry about, mm -hmm. you know. Like I'm not giving my dad or my mum or, you know, my sister the send-off that they deserve. Yeah. And, um so for me to try and do that 
uh, and like a lot of them, like this afternoon, I have two services to take and they would have had a lot of people attending, which shows to the family of how well liked they are, how loved they are. And, um, you know, that helps, I think, with the grieving process, 100%. Yeah. So they're not being able to do that. And so they're struggling with that, definitely. Yeah. So have you been able to keep your personal mental health at bay going through this? Yeah, so because of my side of being a positive psychology practitioner, um, I've been using lots of my, my tools where, you know, I, I practice gratitude every day, I meditate every day, um, I practice self-love and, um, and exercise every day. And so that has kept my mental health great and I set up a little group on Facebook it started as a little group with over 1200 people in there now of just helping as many people as I can yeah that's amazing so, yeah so for me it's like um I'm actually in a really good place so because mm. I am my mindset's straight I know that I can help other people with that so yeah no I, I'm I'm in a good place at the moment and knowing that I'm helping them as much as I can um that helps as well. That's amazing. So what's a positive instance that, that you would say that you would like to share that you've had to deal with going through this pandemic? So my positive uh, through the whole thing is that I've, although I've been a lot busier, obviously with funeral services, um, for me to be able to step back a little bit and then concentrate on promotion of like what I do and uh, helping other people has um, really worked for me. So it's like little step back and like look into your life, learn a bit more about yourself. And like for me, that's what I'm all about sharing, you know, love who you are and, um, and, and, uh, and appreciate who you are because like, you know, even at times like this, be grateful. Don't think of it as we're stuck at home. Mm -hmm. Think of it as we are safe at home. Mm -hmm. And, um, so yeah, that's my, my positive is that it's give me time to sit and reflect. Yeah. What's something that you would like for the public to know going through the process of what you're going through with planning the process of planning a funeral during this pandemic, if they have to, unfortunately, have to go through this in the future, what's something that you would like for them to know? Um, to know that it doesn't matter how many people are at a funeral service, you know, it doesn't mean that they're not getting the send off that they deserve. Um, for me, it would be to sort of say to them and put them at rest, you know, they are, that you're the ones that they loved and you love them and that's, it doesn't matter how many people are there, just know that they are loved and you were loved by them. Yeah. And, and just really not, not overthinking everything because that's what a lot of them are doing is overthinking like, you know, oh, I'm not doing this, this isn't what my dad or my mum would have wanted. Um, but no, you know, it's out of our control and let's do the best with what we have and what we can do. Is there anything else that you would like to add to kind of give people comfort going through this time? Um, for me, it would just be to um, sit and, and although I'm, I do what I do, is to sit and be grateful that we are breathing and that we are uh, here and living through history as i say and uh you know uh my grandchildren's grandchildren will know about this time <laughs> and what yeah. we all did at this time and so for me it's just like just be grateful because when you're mm -hmm. when you're grateful you cannot be in a negative state of mind your mind doesn't let you so just yeah. look around and see what you can be grateful for